Today, we're gonna be talking about things you need to do before you get out of the army. But without further ado, let's get to it. What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another video and like I just said, we're gonna be talking about things you should be doing uh, when transitioning out of the army, right? Like getting ready to go back into the civilian side because a lot of soldiers, they enter the civilian side unprepared, right? So we're gonna talk about some things that can help benefit you and help prepare you a little more for when you do eventually get out of the service. But before we dive into the topics, guys, a little bit about me. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ben Allen. I did four years active duty as a 68 whiskey and then I got out did the civilian thing for a little joined the reserves and did that for about a year and a half so I have that active duty knowledge that reserve knowledge if you have any questions about either or hit me up in the comment section down below or the best place to reach me is my Instagram at the Ben Allen uh, I answer every question I get typically within a week or so so if you want to ask me questions shoot it on there or join my discord uh, it's a giant community of people getting ready to join people that are in currently and people that are already out so they can help answer your questions as well the link is in the description and uh, yeah guys my goal here on the channel is to hit a million subscribers in the next year so I need y'all's help to do that be sure to smash the like button be sure to subscribe to the channel it really really helps push these videos out to a bigger audience uh, but with all that said let's jump straight into the topic all right so things you need to be doing before you get out of the army right so first one is probably the biggest one right have a plan start making a plan if you're the type of person that knows you're going to be getting out of the army within you know the the span of your contract right whether you have a two-year three-year four-year contract whatever uh and you know you're getting out right i'd say start planning as soon as you get in really uh like what are you what, what are your end goals right like what kind of certs do you hope to get out of the job that you pick for your mos right uh that can transfer over to the civilian side right like what are you going to be doing with your time in service to prepare for your time out of service so that means are you doing college while in right are you using your tuition assistance if you don't know how to use that go to your college center or your education center most bases typically have one. you go there they hook you up with a counselor they kind of walk you through the steps of how to use your TA for school college all that stuff so you can start working towards a degree while you're active duty you know and then when you get out you don't have to worry about you know like starting from scratch right starting from zero because or you even using your GI bill while you're in right you can start using that tuition assistance which I believe covers up to like four thousand dollars a year uh, don't quote me on that you can look it up it'll give you an exact number right but if you do that you're well on your way to start setting yourself up for a degree for when you get out right you may not get it in your entire time in active duty right it might take you a little you might get a little bit done and you can finish the rest in the civilian side but you're that much closer right to getting a degree to set yourself up for more jobs right that's just one thing you can do another thing you can do is what kind of certs are available to you right maybe you're a 68 whiskey right maybe uh, you know you finish AIT you get searched for that you get some uh, credits for that as well on your JST that can transfer over you know to the civilian side as well for certain colleges uh, you never know right there's a bunch of stuff that transfers over it's not everything right but it is some stuff that does transfer over and you should look into that ask your leadership uh, they can give you a you know kind of like it or your s1 uh, my s1 really helped me out when I was doing that uh, to show me like what transferred over to what right or maybe you're in a signal MOS or an intelligence MOS right try getting your top secret clearance right those clearances really really help out a lot in the civilian side right so those are just some things to give you a general idea of what to be like you know looking into right start doing school start looking for certs right it doesn't have to be MOS related just some certs that you feel like would benefit you on the civilian side right and get copies of those certificates as well right because you can't just say oh well, I did this in the army right you need, you need have some proof right uh and that that'll help you up right help you out uh, a little more than if you didn't do that stuff i wish i would have done more of that when i was in to be honest and all of this uh knowledge i'm giving to you guys right now is coming from kind of my first hand experience from either doing it or not doing it right and when i say have a plan right this is probably the biggest thing like a lot of people go into the army thinking they're gonna do you know 10 20 years whatever and they don't really plan to get out sooner than that and maybe something happens or maybe you just don't like the army and you want to get out and you're just kind of left with like what am I going to do right and you get out and you just feel lost you feel lonely and it's just a kind of big mess of like everything emotions you know just hardships that are coming your way because you didn't really plan for it so by planning I mean 
hey, like it, when you're like a year or even two years out, start looking for jobs, start looking for possible employers or start looking into schools that you can use your GI Bill for, right? These things will heavily, heavily give you a sense of like grounding, you know what I mean? It'll ground you in reality and it'll let you know that you're not just gonna be walking around aimlessly in the civilian side, you know, for months to years on end, right? Because you didn't have a plan or you didn't prepare, right? And that's just a general overall blanket thing, but I do think it's one of the most important things is make a plan, right? Whatever that plan entails is up to you, but make some sort of plan before you get out for when you get out. You know what I mean? It'll help you out a lot. All right, guys, the next thing to do is cherish the time you have with the people in the military, right? Uh, I know that's kind of like whatever. It doesn't really like, help you out a whole lot. But uh, when you get out, chances are you may not be seeing some of these individuals for either the rest of your life or a long period of time in your life, right? Because you're out, you know, they're still in or maybe they're out, you're still in. And it, it's, you, you end up missing them a lot more than you think you might, right? Especially the ones you're super close to because the military bonds you through shared experience and you form friendships a lot quicker than typically in the civilian side and to just go from that to the civilian side where you don't have them anymore 24 7 in the barracks uh, pt you know work all that stuff on the weekends uh, i can take a toll especially like you know like i want to say more emotionally or mentally than than physically but right you know emotional mental stuff can manifest stuff self physically as well but like, you know, don't take it for granted. Spend time with them, hang out with them, create memories, take pictures, guys, take pictures. I, I highly recommend it. I have a lot of people posting on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, saying they regret not taking more pictures uh, from their time in service. And I, I do recommend doing that because you can look back and just, you know, hey, man, this is a great time. I remember we were, we were sucking, but we, we had a good time doing it together, right? So that's just another thing, right? Cherish the time you have with the people while you're in because one day you're not gonna be in, and one day they're not gonna be there 24 seven. All right, next thing is SFL tap, right? So SFL tap is pretty much like the transition course uh, that you go through. Typically, you, it's mandatory, you have to do it in order to transition out. And I recommend don't do this way, way, way before your time of getting out. I remember we were eligible to do it like, what, 15, 18 months before we actually got out. I regret doing it that soon because I still had like a year in when I did it. Uh, and by the time I got out, I'd forgotten everything, mostly everything from that class, right? So I recommend setting up SFL tap maybe like three to four months before getting out of the active duty military because they're giving you a lot of valuable information about the civilian world, like like DA select or VA select, right? If you're a veteran, certain jobs look at you more because you're a veteran. They talk about the GI Bill, the Montgomery, the 9-11, uh, how to utilize it, where to utilize it, why to utilize it. Uh, they go into medical insurance, how how you're still covered for a certain amount of months after you get out. They cover so much information in this SFL tap class that I do recommend doing it towards the end of you getting out of the military. That way it's still fresh in your mind for when you transfer over to the civilian side. Uh, trust me, you'll thank me later. Do not do it like a year before you're getting out because you'll pretty much brain dump all that stuff. They give you a book though that you can keep and you can reference. So I highly recommend do not throw that away as well. Uh, but SFL tap guys, big, big, big thing. I promise you, you want to pay attention in that class. I wish I would have more, right? Uh, but that, that's just another tip for you guys. So another thing you guys can be doing before you get out of the army is start making sure your gear is clean. Uh, if, if you've gotten out of the military, you know what I'm talking about, right? CIF, right? The central issuing facility, right? Where you get your gear when you first get there and where you got to turn your gear in uh, when you're getting out. And if you guys have dealt with CIF, you know how strict and you know stingy they are. Like they're just Oh, there's a speck of dirt on here. Take it back, clean it. It's dirty. Can't turn it in, and that just prolongs your process of you know getting out because you got to go clean these things, right? I highly recommend before you even go to CIF, right? Maybe the day before or a couple days before, take your stuff to a car wash, right? One of those do-it-yourselves and spray that shit down. Put the soap on there. It's just really go in there with the pressure washer that they have. You know, just. I promise you it'll save you a lot of time and heartache, right? Uh, make sure everything's squared away. If it's in the package, awesome, cool, that's great. Uh, but just from top to bottom, clean this stuff. I remember uh, the lady at CIF told me that they used Dawn dish soap uh, to really get in there and reduce like grime and stuff like that. So if you got some really dirty stuff, you're always in the field, highly recommend that. Really just take the time, right? Wash your stuff, right? Just throw it in the washer if you need to 
clean it because uh, it'll save you a lot of heartache and struggle later on in terms of going through CIF and just turning in your gear and just getting turned back because something was a little bit dirty, right? I'm telling you guys, like they're super strict. It'll save you a lot of time, right? And I guess with that, I guess the last thing I would say, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's more stuff I can cover, right? But these are the ones that are coming to mind right now. Uh, the last thing is make sure your leave days are accounted for, right? Like make sure you have everything squared away, right? Get your packet like started on beforehand. Make sure it's good. Make sure like if you have 70, you know, like terminal leave days, use those 70 guys. I'm telling you. I mean, you could sell them back, right? Uh, but so I, I recommend just taking them because you're you stand to make more money by just taking the leave days and still getting paid for being in technically while you're on terminal leave and just using that time to clear. I remember I used, you know, my leave, some of my leave days just to clear that I wouldn't have to worry about formations or anything like that. And I remember I went through the whole struggle of like, oh no, you can only take 60 terminal days. I was like, ah, it says I have 70 though. And they were like, no, nah, you can't do that. And then I went to talk to another first sergeant. They're like, yeah, no, you can take those days. I mean, you earned them. Those are your terminal days. So he signed off on it. We were good. And I just highly recommend getting your leave in order because you do not want to be out of the army but still technically like in the army because your leave packet didn't get approved you don't want to go through those hurt like hoops and ladders right it's just a big hassle i highly highly recommend against it right you want to you want to plan ahead planning ahead will save you a lot of you know struggle in the end 10 minutes of prep will save you an hour's worth of work later on down the road when in terms of getting out of the army right all right guys and with that being said that pretty much covers this video i know there was just like a few things i went over but these are some of the biggest things to me uh that can help make your transition a lot smoother uh because if you do these things you're setting yourself up for success right you're getting out you have something lined up you have a plan you know your transition goes smoothly because your gear was cleaned your lead is already approved or it's taken care of and there's no extra steps you have to go through right because if you got the leave done cool great if you got the CIF clean great that's pretty much two of the biggest things that you got to knock out in terms of like you know doing the whole ETS process and then if you planned ahead you're good for when you get out right uh, if you did school you did college if you know you got certificates maybe you already got an employer or a school lined up and SFL tap biggest thing make sure you pay attention guys and utilize everything they're teaching you in that class to have a good time in the civilian world but thank you all for tuning in I'm Ben Allen again be sure to like this video so it sends it out to a larger audience and subscribe 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 guys I'm trying to hit a million subscribers in the next year need y'all's help to do it right and uh yeah guys if you have any questions hit me up in the comment section down below or the best possible place to reach me is my instagram at the ben allen i try to get back to everybody within a week and if you want to join my community hit the discord link down in the description box below it'll take you there we have people that are getting in people that are currently in people that have been out and they just help answer y'all's questions so if that interests you definitely join click the link it's free to do so it doesn't cost a thing and uh yeah i will see y'all in the next one later.